Good afternoon, friends and neighbors. It is time now for another networking video. This is chapter one in the Packet Guide to Voice over IP and intro to Voice over IP. All right, so one of the biggest questions that we have is what exactly is Voice over IP? And for lack of a better phrase, it is exactly as it sounds. It is sending your voice over the internet. But that is a vast oversimplification, of course. What does this really mean? It is nothing less than changing everything about how we handle voice communications. So we're talking about different networks here. We're talking about different protocols, different techniques, different equipment. Everything is different, different skill sets. The only thing that is the same is that we are still going to take our voice. Our voice doesn't change very much. We're still going to send it to somebody else, and that someone has to be able to understand it and then communicate back to us. But other than that, other than those ideas, everything is different. So let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison. When we talk about traditional telephony, a lot of terms pop up here, and we have a, a whole other set of discussions on traditional telephony. But we talk about things like circuit switching, and local loop, and tip and ring, and POTS, and the fact that it's the Public Switch Telephone Network, or PSTN. The protocols or the architecture that governs this particular network is Signaling System 7, and almost all of the protocols that we're dealing with here are ITUT protocols. This is as opposed to Voice over IP, which uses packet switching. Remember that we're dealing with IP packets here. The protocol suite that we're talking about here is TCP IP. The protocols themselves, or at least the most common ones that we're going to deal with, are going to be SIP, H.323, Skinny, RTP. Now a little word on H.323, that's still an ITUT standard. If we follow the voice over IP conversation a little farther, we get into something called unified communications. And that's where we integrate messaging and email and presence and all those sorts of things. We'll talk about those later on. One of the other big deals about voice over IP is that generally it has a lower total cost of ownership, although there are some gotchas there, and we'll talk about that too. We have E911 is a big issue. And of course, instead of being on the PSTN, we are dealing with the Internet. Now as a little side note, remember that many of the companies that are involved in the PSTN are also involved in running connections and traffic on the Internet. So here's another way of looking at the two networks, comparing them side by side. The top one here is the traditional telephony network. And we start with a telephone, and that goes to our PBX, or our central office, the telephone switch. And that connection, all the way going down to the phone, that's what we might call our local loop. It also might be a connection to a desktop unit. And these are typically analog and digital. Remember that when we're talking about traditional telephony, we're really talking about analog and digital connections. PBXs, central offices, um, all have a collection of technologies that use to interconnect. Probably one of the most popular is the T1. And again, this is all governed by SS7. In the lower picture, we can see that the topology looks very similar, although, of course, that's just the way I drew it. But if you take a close look at what's going on here, we see that the voice over IP phone is actually connected to an Ethernet switch. In fact, they're sometimes called Ethernet phones. Taking the place of the traditional PBX is something called a call server, although it is often referred to as a voice over IP PBX. And then, of course, all of the connection types are uh, run by the protocol suite of TCP IP. Now, I just want to note here that while we're separating many of the ideas, there's nothing at all that says they can't be combined. So, for example, a PBX might service analog, digital, and voice over IP phones. A, a company might have a TCP IP based connection going to the internet and run that over a T1. So, this, this is not to be interpreted as being exclusively one side or the other. A lot of the technologies mix and match. But there is one thing that's absolutely different is that when we're dealing with VoIP, we're dealing with TCP IP. And when we're dealing with traditional telecom, we're dealing with a public switch telephone network, ITUT protocols, and signaling system 7.
Well, if we're going to start talking about a voice over IP network, we have to become conversant with some of the terminology. So the call server, that is the thing that all of the nodes or the phones register with. So you log in, it connects to the call server. When you want to dial a phone number, you're typically talking to a call server. Uh, when you want to talk off-site, you're talking to a call server. The signaling protocol, the thing that allows you to talk to the call server, the thing that allows you to dial numbers, register, make requests, that's the signaling protocol. Now there's a, a, a corresponding signaling protocol in SS7 too. When we actually start talking and we're taking our voice samples and putting them inside packets, for that we use the transport protocol. Now a voice over IP network is not a network that has its own set of protocols and that's it. There's a lot of support that goes into, it, into this. DHCP and TFTP and power over Ethernet are very common techniques that we use to keep a voice over IP network up and running. Now I've got gateways down here. Gateways have a connotation in the networking world. In this case, what we're talking about is something that understands how to talk to another type of voice over IP network or the traditional network. So it's very common for a gateway to understand TCP IP and the voice over IP protocols on one side and then understand signaling system 7 on the other. Well, I think that'll do it for today. Just a quick start here. We'll continue with our introduction next time on part two. Uh, remember that you can get a lot of information and a lot of uh, resources out of BruceHartbents.com, building configs out there and things of that sort. Uh, the website's been updated, rearranged a little bit, make it a little easier for you to find things. You're here on YouTube watching this video, so you probably are aware of the Packet of the Week stuff and the videos that correspond to the other books. Well, thanks for watching, thanks for stopping by, and may your packets always reach their destinations.